Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to take a look at the Narancia Girga and Aerosmith figure from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Super Action Statue line. Uh, this is the first character I've gotten from Part 5, Vento Ario, and uh, was kind of one that I bought mm, sort of on a whim. I mean, Narancia's been my favorite character uh, since I read Part 5, uh, with Guido Mista being my second favorite. Um, so I, I knew for quite a while that if I came across this figure, I'd probably end up getting it, but... Um, I wasn't expecting the number of JoJo's figures they had at Yomacon, uh, let alone how many of them they had from parts 4 and 5, and even a few from part 6. They had Jolene and Stone Ocean there, which I really thought about getting, uh, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend uh, that much more for two figures when I could get one, because uh, I already bought Killer Queen at that point. I bought Killer Queen on like the first day, because um, I'm that obsessed with that stand, and we'll be getting here at some point to go with it. Uh, but anyways, like I said, Narancy has been my favorite since I read Part 5, uh, or at least my favorite from Part 5 since I read it. Uh, and I was convinced that Narancy was a girl until about halfway through when they're like, no, nope, Narancy's a dude. Um, I think that's part of part of that's the, the art style for Part 5 is very uh, thin characters, uh, sort of a feminine frame for almost everyone in that series. So uh, I think that's just part of why I assumed that Narancy was a girl from the outset. But uh, I really love the character, kind of this wacky... Um, goofball of a character to some extent. I mean, not as much of a, of, of a goofball as, like, Okayasu is in Part 4 or Paul Nareff is in Part 3, uh, but still a really fun, uh, less serious character, and that's, that's what I really enjoyed about uh, Narancia. Take a look at the box here. We have some nice uh, purple and orange sort of fading into one another there, and same sort of pattern as every other uh, JoJo's box, but it is a little bit bigger box, uh, more in line with uh, what they did for uh, Dio, and I think Abdul's was bigger like that as well, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, the rest of them are all stored in my closet at the moment. Uh, but along the side there, you have a sort of static pose of Narancia and Aerosmith. Then on the back, you have some more action poses. And uh, the two heads that you get with the package here, the stand, or the action base, as I was calling them in other reviews. Um, all the accessories listed on the back there. And same pose on the other side. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it for the box. As for the, uh, character itself, the figure itself, we, of course, have the purple and orange, uh, color scheme that was sort of the default, uh, colors for Narancia in the, uh, the story itself. Uh, <clears throat> have some really nice detail here on the, uh, sort of skirt. And this is made of a softer sort of rubbery plastic, uh, so it can sort of move with the uh, legs when you're posing those. Uh, I got some nice detail here on the little uh, ornaments on the top of the shoes. Those are actually attached to the shoe, but they look like they're a separate piece, just the way that the plastic is molded, which is a nice little touch there. Uh, bandana on the top of the head looks quite nice. Uh, just overall, this figure looks really good. Uh, again, as with the other JoJo's figures, I'm not real hot on the fact that I can see all the joints here in the arms. Uh, they're definitely more noticeable there than the legs because the legs are a darker color and have sort of that f like fake fabric look to the pants. Um, and I think part of that as well is, is the fact that the arms are so much skinnier on this figure than most of the other JoJo's ones that I own. Uh, the only other one I can think of that comes close to that is uh, uh, Silver Chariot or, or Hierophant Green. Those are the only other characters that are kind of skinny like that. But uh, this one, far and away, the most skinny of all the JoJo's characters I own. Uh, taking a look at the posability for this character, though. Pop Morancia off the action base. Uh, arms, you can get them to go out about that far. Uh, and you kind of have to adjust the elbow there. I had it posed in a little bit different way. You get them to go out about 180 there, or 90 degrees, rather. Uh, yeah, be up 90 degrees from the torso, wouldn't it? Uh, you can get them to Rotate around at the shoulder 360, no problem. Get them to bend pretty much 180. Uh, that's one benefit of having such a skinny uh, frame for this guy. Get the wrist to go up and down quite a bit. That can rotate 360, no problem. Uh, the neck is a lot more uh, mobile than some of the other ones because there's no collar or anything there. Uh, you do get a sort of up and down motion there. There's a joint here at the chest, as well as a hinge here in the neck and a ball joint. Uh, you can get the head to more or less rotate 360. I mean, the 
the joint's going to kind of hinder it once you get around the back there just because of how low the, the chin comes down, but you can get them to go quite a ways around either way if you wanted to. I'm not sure why you'd want to have it posed that far back, but you can do it if you want to. Uh, the torso can go back and forth like so, can rotate side to side. Um, you can get quite a bit of rotation out of it, although I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend going all the way around. It's, it's possible, uh, but I don't know if I'd really recommend it. The uh, the difference between this figure and some of the other ones is that this upper torso uh, seems to be a little bit more stiff than some of the other ones. Not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but it certainly looks more flush with the uh, stomach and the chest there as sort of one whole thing. Uh, but you can still get some back and forth out of that if you want to, and some uh, some side to side as well. So you can get a little bit of a decent lean out of it. The legs can go up about that far, can go back only about so far, but you can get the legs to bend at the knee almost 180. Uh, you can get the feet to go back and forth quite a bit, can rotate side to side and go 360 no problem, and then of course the toes do flip up and down uh, just fine there. Now this sort of relaxed posed head is the one that I just uh, showed off earlier when it was on the figure. There's also an open mouth sort of uh, intense sort of action face there that I prefer to put on the figure when I'm posing it on my shelf because of the accessories that it comes with. Uh, I did show the open splayed palm hand there. Uh, the closed fist hand was already on this side, uh, but I put the sort of pointing finger hand on that one, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, there's another closed fist hand for the other arm. There's a similar pointing finger for the other arm. You have sort of this uh, relaxed grip hand, sort of a firing a gun uh, type finger pose there, and then uh, another sort of relaxed open palm hand here. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me because I don't really remember a lot of the stands that the enemies used in part five. It's been a little while since I read it. Uh, but some of the accessories that come with Narancia are related to uh, those. The knife here uh, was used in one of the stand battles. I don't remember if it was the one where uh, Narancia is saying things opposite of uh, what he means to or if it was a different one. But uh, there's a little knife here, very shiny. has some nice uh, color variation between the handle and the actual blade itself. We have a... A uh, spoon with what looks like crab meat or something like that on it. Uh, not sure if that was from an actual stand battle or if it was just from like the intro uh, sequence when uh, Giorno is being introduced to the gang. And then there's this little little man, and I think this is from when uh, Narancia was shrinking in the in the uh, storyline, and I don't remember. Uh, if that ended up happening to the guy, because that's what I thought was originally was the, the smaller version of Rancio when uh, he's trying to climb up on top of the payphone, but uh, it's actually someone else, and I don't remember if that guy ended up shrinking at the end of the battle or what ended up happening there, so uh, my apologies on that. I can't specifically say what these are from uh, in Vento Aureo because I don't remember it that well. Um, I remember the story as a whole pretty well, and I remember some of the more major stand users. I just don't remember these ones uh, in particular. Then you get uh, some pretty cool features for the uh, action base to use, and I'll show uh, first up is the stand Aerosmith, a little plane here. Uh, it has a nice color and detail on the sort of metallic blue. It's a little bit duller metallic than the, uh, duller of a metallic shine than the gold on the plane, but I think that works well. Uh, you got some little landing gear there, sort of semi-retracted, which is kind of cool. And that serves to hold in place these uh, sort of firing lasers, or firing uh, firing rounds. I don't know why there'd be lasers on a, on a jet plane, but uh, what you do is you just slide them up and underneath the plane. And you kind of have to line them up like one goes underneath that, uh, that bomb or torpedo that's underneath the, the belly of the plane. The other ones kind of get held in by the landing gear there. So it looks like it's firing out rounds. And then you get a little connector piece here, which actually slides through 
the rounds and into the bottom of the plane, so it's actually holding on to both of them. And you can place that uh, up on Narancia's upper arm, kind of close to the shoulder. And that's why I had the uh, pointing finger hand out and the sort of exclamation uh, face on, because it looks like he's uh, commanding his stand to go out and fire at enemies there. You also get a really cool uh, little accessories here for the uh, targeting computer, which is held up by a little propeller there, uh, just kind of floats by Narancy's eye. There's an extra little uh, connector here that goes on the back of the action base, and another peg that will go into the back of the figure, and you just connect the two of them, and now it looks like Narancy has some sort of like tactical advantage or some sort of plan uh, in mind for the fight. Uh, you do get little instruction booklets with the character, uh, nothing too fancy, just these little fold-out pages showing you where the, uh, the joints are on the figure, how to attach stuff. Uh, there is an alternate little uh, stamp piece that I didn't actually take out of the box. That's uh, It's just for Aerosmith. Uh, let me see if I can line it up there. You can kind of see it there. Uh, it's another clear plastic piece that if you wanted to attach Aerosmith just to the action base and not have Narancy attached to it, uh, that's what that's for, is, is using uh, Aerosmith on the action base. But I prefer to have uh, both of them attached. And then the other uh, little booklet is just, uh, I think it's a part of the, like a rewards program or a, if you need replacement parts, uh, just kind of a <clears throat> bunch of text there on that one, no uh, relation to the actual figure itself as far as I know. But uh, yeah, I really like this this figure. I, I think it's pretty cool that they uh, put so much into this single figure, and I, th I think it's great that you get a little bit more because uh, Narancia's stand is a smaller stand than you know something like Dio's The World or uh, Jotaro's Star Platinum. It's it's a much more specialized stand, and I think they did well with this overall package here. Uh, I really like the added accessories. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what all of them are from in Vento Aria, but uh, it's it's quite nice that you get uh, a wide variety of them, just the same. Uh, and you get quite a few options with uh, Narancia's posing as well. The only thing I did notice that I was a little bit of a, uh, a knock against this figure, and I think this is going to be more of an issue over time, is that, say if I have him uh, pose like he's dashing or something like that, and the leg is up, uh, when I go to pull the leg back down, this tends to stay up, uh, just because it's been up like that for a while and the softer plastic kind of gets used to being in that position. Uh, you can sort of press it back down. And it goes down a fair amount, not as much as when I first got out of the box, though. So uh, over time, I feel like that'll sort of get stuck in that position a little bit. Not a huge deal because I do tend to keep my figures in the same couple poses, switch them up every once in a while. But uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind if, if you're looking at getting this figure. But that's pretty much it for this review. And with that, I will see you guys next time.